The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. What is up? Welcome to Cowboys Storyline. It's a morning edition here. This is back to our, actually our, our normal time during the season, but uh, in the off season, we've had to move it today to 10 a.m. Uh, but it is Thursday, May the 16th. A lot going on here. Um, you would think there's there's nothing, but it, it definitely seems like there's there's a lot because there is. There's a, a schedule came out. Yesterday, players are trying to, to, to practice uh, some of the um, their off-season conditioning, and they have a little bit of uh, uh, practices. We'll have some OTAs next week, and then uh, this place is kind of being uh, taken over by the uh, ACM Awards. Is that right, ACM Awards? Um, the Country uh, Music Awards. Uh, CMAs, that's what it is. Sorry, CMAs. One of those. ACM. ACM. Something Academy like that. of Country Music. Well, they're, they're, I mean, they're, there we they, go, they're buddy. Too, they're too close. Um, but yes. I, I won't be at either one of them. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, they'll they'll be here tonight. It should be a good time. Reba McIntyre is uh, hosting that one. Uh, so good times with that. Well, I'm sure you'll see some, some cowboy love at some point on the stage there. I don't know if Jerry or Dak or both will be out there for that. All right. All right. But the big, I think the biggest news was the schedule release coming out um, yesterday. Um, you know, it's a schedule. It's hard to actually say, all right, it looks good. It looks bad. It's it, This is going to be hard. This is not. But it it seems favorable. Um, uh, there's some things I like about it. Uh, Sometimes, you know, you look at the schedule, you look at it for personal reasons. You're like, all right, what does Christmas look like? And, you know, what cold weather games and places you've never been to and what time of the year you're going to go and all that kind of stuff. But, you know, just from a team aspect, um, you know, it's we knew it was going to be challenging. Anytime you you win your division and you play three first place teams and then you play the toughest, you're playing the only division uh, in, in the league that that had every team with a winning record. And that was the uh, AFC North. So you knew that was going to be tough, too, and they're all on here. But the way it's laid out, I don't think it's, it's too daunting. Uh, there's some rough patches, it seems, and then there's some also some some parts in it that I think the Cowboys can, can you know, have some success. So anyways, uh, we'll, we'll talk about it as the show goes on. 888-855-2297 is the number to call or text at 817-290-3298. Uh, I think this might be the day to to get on. The, the lines uh, should be open and clear. We had that's what happens when you change the schedule like this. So uh, we'll hopefully we uh, will be able to have uh, maybe some new callers on here. But all right, let's start it off. We got Dom in Odessa. Hey Nick, how you doing, man? Good. How are you? Me. Good. What's up? Good, man. No, I just wanted to call. I try to call. Like you said, the lines are usually clogged up. Um, Today's I, the we day. We spoke a while back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyways, as far as the schedule goes, I thought, you know, they were going to put the Texans as a primetime game. I was looking at that. Um, well, I thought it, it would be more of a primetime match. I know it's going to be Monday night, but I was thinking Sunday night, you know? I yeah. thought that would be a Sunday night type game. Um, kind of kind of messed up my plans. I wanted to go for the weekend, but, you know, we'll see if we can work it out. Yeah. But I think that, that's going to be a good matchup. But uh, <laughs> I had a question for you. I wanted to get your input as far as the DAC, you know, the whole DAC thing. Um, are they going to let him walk? And if so, I saw that they were going to beef up uh, Trey Lance's workload. What do you think that has to do? Are they going to put a fire under Dak? Or what, what are your thoughts on that? I'll let you answer okay. that. All <laughs> right. Well, thanks for the call. I, I don't really know if they're going to let him walk or not. I mean, I think this uh, what happens this season is going to affect everything. Um, not sure what you've heard about Trey Lance getting more work, um, more work in the preseason. Yeah, remember Dak hasn't played a preseason snap since 2019, so they didn't have any games in 2020, and then he got hurt that season. He was coming off the injury, um, so he didn't play it in 2021, and then he hasn't played one since. So he's not playing any preseason games. Um, you can try to get Cooper Rush ready. I mean, you kind of know what he is, so he can get some, some reps, but you don't know what you have in Trey Lance, so it, it doesn't make sense to really play anybody else. That's, I think, what's happening with the more workload. So that's that's where, you know, and you'll see him get get some some um, a lot of reps there. So 
that's that's I, I think and not only for the Cowboys but for the rest of the league to kind of see what he is because you know if, if something happens and another team and some quarterback gets hurt like we saw last year with the Vikings and Kirk Cousins and they ended up making a trade and uh, you know w- with the Cardinals for Dobbs um, something like that could happen for a team if, if they see they like what they see in Trey Lance uh, in the preseason, you know, or maybe the Cowboys want to keep him. I mean, there's just a lot of options, but right now, not that many people know what he's able to do, and that's because he hasn't played a lot. So this is this is kind of a uh, this will be an, an an audition for him for all the teams, really, and that's what I think is is going to happen there. Now, uh, going back to the first part of the question about the schedule, the Texans, um, I, I haven't seen their schedule. Uh, I don't know if they if they have Sunday night games. Um, you know, I don't I don't know if they're there yet. I mean, if that's if that sounds disrespectful. Oh well, but um, th- you know they, I you know Monday night game that seems good for them. You know, and then that's going to be a good matchup. I mean that they're they're you know a good young team. Uh, looks like they they've got some some good players. And then they they've added some, so they've built on on. It, it seems like they have built off of the success that they had last year, and their quarterback's only probably going to get better now into his second year. And so they you know that's going to be a tough matchup, you know. And they always you know want to come up to Dallas and and show that you know they're they're um you know a, a good worthy opponent of of being a rival. I don't think the Cowboys consider them rivals, but they definitely consider the Cowboys rivals. And that's what happens all the time uh when you haven't won anything. But all right, so that th- that should be a, a fun matchup. Uh, it'll be a plenty of them uh, on the schedule and we'll talk about it as we continue to move on here. Uh phone lines are open 888-855-2297. We have some text uh questions though. Let's let's get that rolling. Uh, this is from Pete in Oregon. I'd like to know the guy's opinion. Uh, this is probably from the last show, but that's all right. I'll take it. Uh, the guy's opinion on Sam Williams playing some linebacker. I think I think he's a – unless they're going to move to a 3-4, which I have not heard that, but uh, I think he's a defensive end. That's that's what he needs to be playing. Um, I think he needs to be rushing the, uh, the, the quarterback from the defensive end position. The, there will be some variables if, if that's what Zimmer has done in the past, and that's what he does this year, where you can, you know, you can have some three-man fronts, some four-man fronts. P- Parsons and Sam Williams can both play that 3-4 outside linebacker in a 3-4, but I don't know if they have the, the personnel on the line and, and really at linebacker to do it that way. So I, I think you're going to see him play more defensive end. But, you know, he's got a unique skill set. Anytime you, you can have a defensive end that's also playing as the gunner on special teams, that just shows what kind of athletic ability he has. He could play, um, you know, different spots. But I think from from where he is in his career from a development standpoint and just, just you know, playing this scheme, I think he needs to be rushing the passer at a defensive end. All right. Um, let's go with uh, Dan and Philly. Uh, what are your thoughts on the Cowboys schedule? There's a rough patch between uh, before the bye week. I'm also not a fan of having to play the Eagles in December in Philly. Uh, thank you, Chris. Bring some water. I should give him a tip. Um, I don't uh, he goes. I don't know about playing the Philly in uh, in December uh, up there in his favorite Cowboys or past Cowboy that he's mentioning today is Tashard Choice. Uh, we've done a lot of stuff with Tashard Choice here lately. Uh, done some interviews with him. Uh, he was down at at Texas. We uh, we've got working on a, a documentary uh, project that that he has been a part of. So yeah, Tashard's a great, great fun guy. Uh, loved having him on the team. Um, all right, let's go to an, let's go to his question. The thoughts on the schedule and also about playing Philly late in the year. Um, yeah, we, I mean, it's it's kind of gone back and, and forth. I mean, that we've played Philly at home uh, at the end of the season uh, a couple times. We played them there. So you you know what's going to happen when you're playing your, your division games uh, towards the end of the season. That's, that's probably your only game that has a chance to be really, really cold. I mean, maybe Carolina, December 15th, that's probably going to be cold um, somewhat at noon, but shouldn't be that bad. But, I mean, Philly... Yeah, Philly, December 29th. I mean, that, 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 there should be a lot riding on that game. Um, you know, he talked about rough patches before the bye. Yeah, I mean, uh, Philly, um, 
uh, Philly is in, in November the 10th, but before the bye, you've got Pittsburgh and Detroit, and then the bye, then you got the 49ers, uh, Falcons, Philly, Houston. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's going to happen. The, 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 that's where the, the, the tough the tough games seem to be right now, and, and that's because that's what we think. We, we think the 49ers are going to be good like they have been lately, and we think that the Lions, Steelers, all those those games. But, yeah, I mean, I kind of like having the bye week right before. But um, still, I I think it lays out pretty pretty nice for, for the Cowboys, though. I, it's not, not too bad. All right, let's go with uh, – this is another text question. Chris from New York. Actually, seeing the lay of the schedule, I'm not as concerned as I was. It's not going to be easy. I think they could win to 10 to 12 games unless there's a major injury to a key player. Another note, last week I heard another sports radio show. There are reports that Cowboys and Jerry Jones want to hit the reset button and get Shadur Sanders if the season goes badly. I don't play. I don't pay much attention to the Cowboys news talk unless it comes from you guys at DallasCowboys.com. Do you think there's a shred of truth to this or just filler? Well, let's go to that part. I mean, they don't have a quarterback that's seemingly under contract next year. So something's going to have to happen here. And, and and it's easy. When that happens, then you can, because of that, you can start looking at all of the options. So you look at the free agents that are out there. You look at the um, projected picks that are out there. So I... I, I haven't heard anyone say that, that, oh, that's what the Cowboys are trying to do. I mean, if they did, they certainly wouldn't say it publicly or even even if it got leaked out. I mean, there's just so much so much time and so many things that have to happen between now and then. So, no, I, I don't know if that's the case. But um, I, I, I do say, I, I do think that, that you know, th- this team's going to have to make some hard decisions at quarterback. So whatever that means... It's going to have to happen, um, you know, here in the next three to four months. We'll see how the season goes uh, for sure. Not three to four months, but really six to six to, to, to nine months that they have to make a decision there. All right. Maurice McCray from Washington State says McCarthy talks um, talked about the uh, presence that Ezekiel brings to the locker room with the statement that he can come in and, and spank a 60-year-old man on the ass and still be welcomed in the locker room. What do you think? for the locker room of 2024. Um, that was kind of an awkward part of the of the uh, c- um, press conference the other day when he did that. So uh, when he said that, but yeah, he, he's just, he just means he's got, he's got a way about him that, you know, where he, he can, he can hang with the young guys. He can talk to the old coaches and he kind of gets along with everyone. And he really always has. So, um, you know, that he, he, he's a guy that that's a, you know, fan friendly uh, locker room friendly. Um, but, you know, to make this work, he's going to have to be a guy that could run the football and, and, and play well um, like he has been in the past. And if he could still do that and do all these other things, then I think it's going to be a good a good thing for him. All right, let's get to the phone calls here. Uh, Jeff in Oregon. Jeff, what's up? Oh, I'm not lot, Nick. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Hanging I'm in doing the- good. Oregon, all right. We, we don't have a lot of calls from Oregon. First time caller. I've texted you a few times, but first time caller. All right. Here go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just a couple of comments, and I'll let you go. And all right. If you want to expand upon them, that's fine. I kind of like the way things are going. I was up and down with everybody else, but I people are going to have to play this year, and uh, either we're going to have two new young linemen. Uh, or not, we're going to see Nealon, I'm sure, play uh, probably that big tackle. And I just, I think it's neat we're going to have a third and fourth receiver that we haven't seen a lot of. They haven't gotten a lot of playing time. I, I just, I like the idea that they're going to play and we're going to find out yeah. what some of these guys can do because we don't see that a lot. Uh, another comment I wanted to make is that you've got a guy like Jerry Jones who's a billionaire, and he's had to be that way because of negotiating and signing contracts and all that he's done. And I'm sure Jerry knows you've got to be able to walk away from a contract. And in this case, in football, walking away means you basically have to trade somebody because uh, you can't make a deal with them. Why lose them? And I'm just curious with you why why you can't seem to get contracts made done like we see other teams do, or 
why we don't just walk away from players and say, okay, we we tried to negotiate faithfully and get faith and couldn't get it done, and that's just the way it worked out. And uh, I'll let you go. It was great. Yeah. Talking to All you right. for the first time, uh, and I'll see what you got to say. Thanks, Jeff. Um, kind of would like a little back and forth there because the re- because I you said they they don't either, they can't get the, them done why don't they get them done or why they just let them walk away I mean it seems like it would be one or the other I mean those are the two options that you have maybe I misunderstood that but uh, no no I I would say respect. I would say negotiate faithfully for so long and then you get to a point where you say okay I, we we can't afford this or whatever your reason is, you, we can't go any further. Mm-hmm. You can't if you're if you're just gonna go until you meet, you know, what they want. Then why not do that right away? But if you spend all this time, I mean, you're at the point with these players where who, who, who are we talking about? Dak, are we just talking about Dak? Is it, 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 any one of them. That's a, that was a big three that are up there. Well, well, Parsons um, has two CD. years left on his deal, and and Mike, and, I mean, and CD still has one. And so, I mean, you know, they say it all the time. They they always say deadlines make deals. So that just lets you know that, that they're not really they're not going to let it kind of force their hand. They're going to kind of let this thing play out. Let the other teams and players in the league and their deals come through. And that's that's the kind of their strategy. But they're getting they're they're up against it now with Dak. I mean that that's that's but what if, that's what I'm saying. But what if Dak doesn't sign? Mm-hmm. Does CD sign? Does CD sign? Yeah. Yeah. Does he sign if Dak walks? No. I mean, he, he'll sign. He'll. He, he, I mean. Sure. Well, why? Why would he not? What do you say? I mean, because you think they're going to have like well, a crappy I'm, quarterback in here for three or four years? Yeah, well. We may very well have that. We may have an AP quarterback. He's gonna, he's gonna sign. He's gonna get the most money, and he's gonna sign. Like if the Cowboys offer him what he's wanting from, you know, he, I don't think they care who the quarterback is at this point in their career, trying to get their second deal. They want to be. He thinks he's the highest. He should be the highest paid receiver in the league. And that's what he wants. No, so, so no, if, if you, if, no. you don't think so? No, no. Okay. Well, I don't think he's comparable to those other receivers. I, it doesn't matter what, sense. yeah, yeah. I, what, what I'm saying is that's what he thinks that he thinks that, and and I oh, don't. Oh, I don't. Think, how many players think they're the best you know, in the league? Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, he's up there. I mean, he he's up there. He's pro- I mean, he's proven that he would be up there. But I, what I'm saying is, I don't think who the quarterback is really matters. If the Cowboys give CD and his agent what they're looking for, I think they're going to do it. Yeah, I'm sure he would like to have Dak. He'd like to have the quarterback. Uh, but but I you know I don't think necessarily that 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 means you know he's not going to sign if he doesn't have you know a quarterback because this team's not going to go forever with with not having a good option there. So if Dak's not the quarterback next year, they'll get a young guy, but they'll get somebody that they think will be pretty good you know uh, soon. So that that'll be the plan. All right. Well, Jack. I just I I just don't I just hope that Jerry as general manager doesn't let it get to the point where. It's in its last year. He's in his last year. Mike is in his last year. Because, like you said, I mean, deadlines. Yeah. If they were reading deadlines, like your contract's up, then yeah. they can decide, well, I'll, get, I'll probably get more money elsewhere. I might. Yeah. Well, it's a risky deal for both sides. You know, it's it's risky. It's it's risky if the player holds out. Thanks for the call, Jeff. It's risky if the player holds out because you know he could get injured and in the price, or he could play bad and the price, or or you know not play as well as is what they're expecting, and the price tag could go down. Or you could just not sign the guy, and and then you know just like CD, you just don't sign him last year, you let him play off this year, and he sets all kinds of records, and now he wants the the, the highest paid money in the league. So um, it, it's it's a game, it's a cat and mouse game, and and. You know, you, know, it, you can see it kind of play out in both ways. All right, let's go to another text question. Julio from Frisco. His wrestler is Stone Cold, his favorite football movie, the program, Necessary Roughness, and man movie would be any John Wick film. Um, got a new one. Want your thoughts, Friday Night Lights. Show, movie, or book? I'd like the show the best. All three were great. His Cowboy prediction this year is 10-7. and seven. 
Uh, that's a good question. Friday Night Lights. The show, the movie, or the book? Uh, I'm going to go with the show. I, I was late. I was late to the party on that one. And this, it had already finished the five seasons or so. When I started, I was like, let me finally watch this. What's all this about? I like the movie, but the show is outstanding. Yeah, I would, I would, I would, I'd like to see a movie on the show uh, for, for the, the cast of the show. That's what I want to see happen. I think that would be really cool. Really, really good movie. Friday Night Lights. Um, and it's funny, we had our first call, it was from uh, Odessa, where um, all that really took place. All right, let's go to the, uh, another first time caller. We got it on the line, Jeremy in Utah. What's up, Nick? How we doing? How are you, man? Got some energy. Good. Yes, yes. I finally, I've been listening for years. This is obviously my first time getting through, and I'm stoked. Uh, there we go. That's right. There we go. <laughs> so, Nick, uh, me and you have actually met before. All right. Years ago, about 10 years ago. Uh, it got a little bit of backstory. I was listening that summer, and I remember when the schedule came out, you said, look, week, uh, I think it was like week seven at Seattle. We're going to win that game. And Seattle just won the Super Bowl. And uh, we'd uh, just had uh, another 8-8 eight and eight season. And then that was at the start of the 2014 season. Uh, went to Seattle, got tickets to that game. And, and by hell, we beat them. And it was like an amazing game. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the game... I was screaming at you from the end zone, telling you that you called it. And I remember you coming up and shaking my hand, telling me, like, uh, to enjoy it and everything. We had a little chat. But it was a really cool moment. Ooh. And, uh, man, that was just an amazing game. What a game. And yeah. it was one of the best, the best game I've ever been to live in my life. Yeah. Right? I got a story. Um, I got a story about that game, too. I, I'll, I, I can tell it when, when the call's over. But, uh, yeah, yeah that, that was a great one. Um, yeah, I remember in the first quarter they blocked a punt, and it was like a bomb went off. I've never experienced anything that loud in my life. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, getting to new things, um, you know, I've been listening to this show, and I love this show, and I, I'm great that um, everybody gets a chance to have their opinion, voice their opinion. But I've always told people, you know, uh, I hate Eagles fans the worst. They are trash. They're garbage. But sometimes my second is other Cowboys fans <laughs> that are always negative, that are always, like, pushing these false narratives that they learn from these idiots on ESPN. I stopped watching ESPN, like, when the T.O. tried to kill himself narrative came out, and they kept pushing that. And um, I, I just, at that point, I figured out ESPN isn't news. It's like the Fox News of sports. It's just, right. just a bunch of opinions. And bad ones at that. And, you know, there's this narrative that Zeke is all run down and and, and uh, King Henry would have been the greatest thing. Like, they came out in the same draft, right? And people don't um, ever, like, realize, like, if you look at Zeke's career, he had that one rough year where he, in 2000 or in, in 20, where he had the fumbling issue. He also had COVID that year, too, right? Right, right. And people forget, these aren't baseball cards, man. These are people, right? I had COVID and knocked me, it knocked me in the dirt for a good few months, right? And, yeah. um, you know, the other thing was Kellen Moore and his play calling, I feel like, ruined Zeke's career in Dallas. Um, there were many games. Uh, I'll go back to the Green Bay game a couple of years ago where I'm sitting in a bar mm-hmm with some Cowboys fans and other people that hate the Cowboys, all of us screaming at the TV, run the ball, you know? And Kellen Moore just wouldn't. He just kept throwing the ball. Same thing with the Jacksonville one a few years ago. Yeah. So I think Zeke is going to have an amazing year, and I think he's going to surprise a lot of people. And all these people bitching and moaning about not doing anything in free agency, when has that ever worked out for a team? When is going and getting a bunch of free agents and overpaying ever worked out? I want them all to tell me when that's ever worked out. You remember the Eagles when they went and got Namdi and Vince Young and this whole all-star team, and then they sucked. Do you remember that? 
Yeah, I, I do. I also remember them getting a couple in the 2017 season, and then they won the Super Bowl. I mean, I don't think I don't think you use free agency to like you know piece your team together and, and be you have superstars, but I think you can find some core pieces there that that could help. Um, and and there has been some cases where that sort of happened, but but I don't know if if if, if like you're saying. You know these guys will carry us to a Super Bowl based off free agency because if they're that type of player, they probably wouldn't you know be available. So exactly, yeah, yeah. And I remember in the early 2000s overpaying for a few guys, and it never did us any well. You yeah. know what I mean? So I'm kind of I'm kind of glad. I kind of like what the front office is doing this last 10 years or so, drafting well getting kind of role players from free agency and the biggest free agency and the best that we are in the league is picking out free agents, rookie free agents. Right. How many have made the team in the last 15 years for the Cowboys and been great players yeah. or, or serviceable, good players, right? Yeah. Well, Jeremy, Jeremy, I'm going so, to leave you with this. This is what the Cowboys, this is what their philosophy is about free agency. Okay. And the players that are available. Yeah. All right. Average players, yeah. average players will get good contracts in free agency and good players will get great contracts in free agency and great players never make it to free agency. That's the way that they right. think. And, and so that's how they view this, this kind of stuff. So if you see a good player, I mean, I think Dorrance Armstrong was a good player and he got a great contract, but absolutely, if he, if he was a great player for the Cowboys. He wouldn't have been in free agency. So that's, absolutely all right. All right, good good call, man. Thanks, and it, it was good. I I kind of remember honestly. I kind of remember meeting you there in Seattle. I remember that walking off the field because in that corner there in the end zone, there's that's this right. one guy that he's like the the heckler guy, you know. And so it's so great to walk. That past was him. me. No, 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 no. I'm talking about a Seattle fan. This is a Seattle fan. Oh, that I was is... yelling at another Seattle fan. We're back. Yeah. I kept telling him we're back. Well, this guy was shit. Where are we? Yeah. I don't know. I don't, I don't... Well, that, you know, that hey, 2014 for that day, team should have won the Super Bowl, bro. Yeah. Well, I think Des still caught it. All right, Jeremy. Thanks for the call. Good stuff always. All right. Um, got some a lot of text questions here. I'm going to get one of these. How about... Uh, a caller. Or this is uh, from Tyler, Texas. No name, but he says, um, "Do you think Pollard's replacement is on the team?" Uh, I would add an S to that. I think Pollard's replacements are on the team. Um, one of them, at least. I still, I've, I've said it. I still think something different's going to happen. I think they're going to look. They're going to find something. They're going to maybe make a trade. Um, uh, I don't think all of his replacements are on the team. I think there's going to be some guys though. Zeke is one of them. I think Rico's also in there. We'll see how it all shakes out, but I, I still think that there's something else going to happen uh, for this team. I really believe that. All right, Lewis in Langston, Oklahoma is on the line. Lewis. Hey, how you doing? Um, Good, man. I was just uh, checking out the schedule, uh, trying to convince my wife to go about go to about three of the games. I haven't been to a game in maybe tw since 2012. But you, so, but you, but you want to hit three. Yeah, yeah, at least three because – I got some friends that are Saints fans. Oh, yeah, that's the one. That's yeah, the one. Right, that's one right there. Because you're in Oklahoma. Right. You right, got a right, noon right. game. You got a noon game. Get there. Get exactly. back. Boom. You got to hit that. Come okay. on. Okay. So I need you to call my wife and tell her the exact same thing you said. Well, she can okay. just, I don't know about calling anybody's wife, but I'll say <laughs> this. Uh, why, why don't you just, why, just have her listen to the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's okay. All, All right. right. Hey, <laughs> Lewis is better half. I'm talking to you. <laughs> It's been 12 years. You guys need to go to the Cowboys game. You need to go. There's been more noon games on the schedule than ever before. Uh, yep. Most of them are on the road, which is good if you're traveling and you would get back at a decent time. But this game's at home, New Orleans. It would be an easy, it'd be an easy trip, a one-day trip. Pack the car, go down to AT&T Stadium. Hey, get loud because the Saints fans will be coming. The, they'll be bringing um, a lot of fans from the other side too. It'll be early in the year, so they still think they're going to have a good team. So it'll it'll be a very lively uh, game for the NFL. You should be there and and bring Lewis as well. Uh, bring him because he he wants to go to the game. That's my pitch to her. Amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> All right. No, I was calling, and then you know what's crazy? I, I think I might have to call you again because they yep. played on Sunday the. 
October the 13th, Detroit. That's our anniversary. So I, I might need to call you again to give another pep talk. I don't know if I can help you on that one on the anniversary. You know what I mean? Unless she's got like a tattoo with a star, like she's a diehard cowboy fan, you know, and and, and that's something she would want to do. But, you know, you're going to have a hard time maybe watching the game. I, I would just go for that one. You know, maybe not going down there, but uh, I don't know. I mean, you know. Yeah, yeah, hey, yeah. No, yeah, I, you, I, make a weekend of it. Make a weekend of it. Go, go down, and there's a lot of stuff to do in in Arlington down there. Make a weekend of it, and then uh, you know, um, I'm sure. I'm you know, uh, unlike the Saints, I, I I think that Detroit may not have a ton of fans. I mean, they you know they they've developed some here over the last few few months probably, but um, right, right. yeah, I think it'll be that'd be a good one. That's gonna be a good game though. I mean, it was a good yeah. game before. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, if yeah. Detroit knew the rules, they might have won that game. But you know, <laughs> no, I think they knew the rules. I mean, I love the coach. There was, he, yeah, he, he fit off a little more than he could chew at that moment. I, I mean, I'm not 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 taking the shot, but yeah, I'm. That was a that was a crazy game. <laughs> well, and he did it in the NFC Championship too. I think after watching the Cowboys game and then watching that one, I think it realized he didn't. He just doesn't like his kicker, and uh, he was just like, hey, "We're not going to kick field goals. We're going to go win this game." And they didn't e- either time. But um, yeah. it's not going to be an easy one. I mean, because Detroit, you know, they're young, they're talented, they had a lot of money, they added to it. Um, yep. You know, yep. they're, they're like Houston in that they've you know they, they've coming. never won anything. Cool. But yet they think you know this is gonna. They're building something, and and, and they're gonna right, come into right. Dallas both these games, and that, those are gonna be tough. Those are gonna be tough home games. The Cowboys have some tough home games, uh, yeah. but they have. That, to... That's why I called. That's why I called because I wanted to know what 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 because I was looking at it and I was the first eight games look like it's going to be the the meat and potatoes. That, like as far as how they play and, and the, the way the schedule lined out, like where you say the the hardest the yeah. hardest part of the the, the schedule. In your opinion, would be, I it just what it looks like, and I have to qualify it all the time. I mean, you just just go back to last year. If you were to say, "Hey, boy, that week two game, don't worry about that with the Jets because they're you know Aaron Rodgers is probably going to tear his Achilles. He won't even play. But worry about that Cardinal game because I don't think the Cowboys are going to have any offensive linemen that have ever played in that game, and they're right. going to forget how to tackle. So you you just never know how to how to, these games are going to go. But looking at yeah. it. Yeah, it does look like, the, the, like you said, the meat and potatoes are there in the first eight games. But all right, let's say let's say you're three and five. That's yeah. not good. That's not good for McCarthy. But let's say you're three no. and five. No. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but then, but then I don't. You get to Houston at home. Okay. Look at the next games. That's the one I focus on. I guess I'm a, I'm a glass half full guy because I yeah. I see what you see, but then I look at this stretch of six games. Mid November to mid late December, Houston yeah. at home, at Washington, Giants at home, Bengals at home, at the Panthers, Bucks at home. Let's go. I mean, I think you can make it work. You can start, make it happen. That's start, where start that's start where you better. Five, I, yeah, I'm you, just you saying. You might be able to pick up something at that time. That's what I'm talking about. Three and five would be not ideal, of course. I mean, you wouldn't want that. Right, right. And, and this team isn't as good as we think they are if they're going to go three and five. But I'm saying at that point in the year. You should be able to make a stretch here. And I think, um, you know, and I know Cincinnati, I mean, Cincinnati's tough and Houston will be tough and the Giants on Thanksgiving could be tough. But I'm just saying, you're gonna, if you're going to be the team that you think you're going to be, this is it. This is time to do it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the, that's the time to try to get it together. And like you said, we, we don't know how Mike McCarthy feels about it. But, I mean, if he's looking at the schedule, he wants to make as much hay as he wants as he can in the yeah. first half of the schedule. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, well, right. I'm, oh, I appreciate you know. I'm, I might call you again. You know, I need you to be the pitch man because the way you was trying to sell it, <laughs> I mean, man, I'm telling you that might work. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you you, you have to do the work, but you know oh, that yeah. that's oh, yeah. the that's the pitch. Uh, it's been 12 years uh, since you've been to the game. You know, it, hey, we need we need to we need to get back. Need, need to get back, make it happen. So <laughs> there we go. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Thank All right, you. I'll Lewis. Call you later. Have a good one. Good stuff. You know, I need to just focus on my own home. You know, my own situation. I can't be. I'm giving advice. I mean, need to need to make sure I'm doing it right. All right, Joe in Montrose, uh, Pennsylvania. Hey, Nick. Good to be on with you. Yeah, how are you doing? Good. Um, I would. I would love for the Cowboys to be more 
innovative than they've been in many, many years, more forward thinking. And, and to me, I'm thinking about team building and specifically about uh, with the 18 game schedule coming up sooner rather than later, I think mm. um, that's going to mean that you're going to have to play 21 to 22 games to play in the Super Bowl. Um, and I, I don't see how teams can have three or four players that take up more than 50% of their cap and, you know, have a lack of depth at other positions. And I would love to see them, you know, they're in the perfect period with these expiring contracts to change their philosophy and say, you know, the strength of our team is Will McClay and his drafting. I think he's one of the best in the leagues. And I think if they could, you know, give him more capital and let him, um, you know, draft the best players available and tell the coaches, hey, we're, we're not – fitting them into your scheme, you're going to fit your scheme around the players that will drafts um, and, and just build depth and youth and healthy uh, players. I would love for them to see, you know, see them try something like that. Not saying it's guaranteed to work, but, you know, just change it up a little bit. And they used to be, you know, very innovative back in the day. And I just haven't seen a lot of that from them lately. And, you know, just something to change it up a little bit. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm all about doing something different. I mean, you you can't just keep doing the same thing for 28 years now, and not, you know, haven't been to the Super Bowl and just say, well, this is this is the way to do it. I mean, the, there's some tweaking involved, and I I think you're right. I think they they, they should. Um, you know, it, it just it's it's hard to to let you know they've developed good players. I mean, this is a team that has a lot of Pro Bowlers, and it's hard to let those guys go. Um, and you know they, they've done it some. I mean, some of these guys that they they've let go. Tony Pollard was one. Tyler Biotis is another. I mean, guys that have, you know, but they had pro, they weren't coming off Pro Bowl seasons. I don't know if they would have let them go if they were coming off a Pro Bowl year. So it it's it's tough when you when you go through the draft, you de, you de, you build it, you develop them, and then they become really good players, and you want to keep them. You want to figure out the best place, you know, the the ways to keep them, um, and that's what they've they've tried to, to do and. You know, it's and, and let's be honest. I mean, this team has been good. This has been a good team most of the time, um, and a team that can compete and go win it. And they, they just haven't been able to get over the hump. Um, do you blow it up because of that? Some people would say yes, but I, most people would say no to that. You know, you, you, you keep you keep fighting, you keep tweaking here and there and making this thing happen. It just hasn't happened yet. And the standards are so high. I mean, look at all these teams that are that are excited about what they're doing and they still haven't won anything. You know what I mean? It's just a different world that the Cowboys are in when they they, they get judged by can you win the Super Bowl? Because if you haven't, then we're just going to keep tacking on these years, and and that's what building all this frustration that the Cowboys can't win, and they get these little shots from other teams about oh the Cowboys will never win. I mean, it's funny when you look at these schedule release videos. Look at the teams that that talk the most crap, you know, and it's the ones that have never peed a drop. That's what's funny to me. But whatever. All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I just think that if you're going to try something new, this is the perfect time to do it with the expiring contracts. You know, if, in, instead of signing Dak for another three years or whatever, and then being kind of stuck with right. that. You know, if you're going to try something different, this is the perfect time to do it. So, all right, you know. all right, Joe. All right. Appreciate all right. it. Good, Thank good you. hearing from you. Um, all right, I, I think. We've got just a few more minutes here on the show because I know we've got um, the Players' Lounge coming up uh, a little bit after this, right after this. Uh, the Players' Lounge will be here at 11 o'clock Central Time, but we can still go for another 10 minutes. But the phone lines are are open right now. So if you want to make a call, um, we, when we've had five calls. I think that's the, the lowest we've ever had. I'd like to get to six. If we can get one more call in, that'd be great. We do have some text questions um tj in uh, baltimore how does this running back rotation compare to 2009 barber choice and felix jones it doesn't it doesn't compare sorry that's not um that's not anywhere close to what what this team has right now barber for a pro bowler uh was just unstoppable around the goal line he, he could score uh, you know any anywhere in between the you know 10 yard line I mean, he was probably going to score felix jones could score any 
part in part of the field and then Char Choice is your third back. I mean, that's pretty good. And I don't think the Cowboys have that. I think all three of those guys at that year would be starting on this team. So this doesn't compare um, in my mind, but I mean, that's it's okay. I mean, I mean, Zeke, Zeke's not at that, that point in his career. Uh, but but still, you know, there's some of you guys think that he can have a really, really good season. And and, and I, I think he can. I do think he needs uh, some help. He needs some another guy in here. I'm not sure who that is going to be. But I, I definitely think that they can, you know, they get it blocked up front. I think the, the, the running backs can be good. Um, I just think that, that they need um, – I, I just don't think it's over yet. It's not, not over yet on to see who's going to be running the ball. All right, Eric and Amarillo, uh, do you think Deuce Vaughn has a real chance to play? What do you think the Cowboys' plan is with him? Uh, is he just a gadget running back? Can he not be a starting running back because he's too small to pass protect? I don't think he's going to be a small. I don't. I mean, I, mean, I don't think he's going to be a starting running back. I, I think, yeah, that 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 would be a challenge for him to take that many hits all the time. I think that you know he, he's just not built that way. And that doesn't mean he can't do it every now and again. But I don't think he's built to to the point to to be the you know the every down running back and to take. You know, to take the the hits that that are needed when you have the ball and when you don't. But yeah, I mean, I think he can be a, a, a gadget back, if you will. He can he can have his carve out his own niche a little bit. He needs to be a good um, you know pass catcher out of the backfield. I think he'd be a really good two minute offense type guy. Get in there and you know we saw that with Lance Dunbar when he played. I mean, he you know he could catch the ball out of the backfield. So I think he could do that kind of stuff. But you know, for for the most part, uh, I I don't think that that he is going to be your your starter. But I do think that if he continues to develop, yeah, he can have a role on the team. All right, uh, Bob in Rio Grande Valley. Hey Nick. Hey, how you doing, Bob? I'm in a much better frame of mind than the last time I called. First of all, I want to apologize for the disparity things that I uh, said on that conversation that day. Uh, Evidently, no, no, I'm ashamed of myself, and I apologize. Yeah, that's all. Uh, thank you for calling, and thank you for saying that. And we can just leave it at that. Uh, hey, you made the all all the storyline team. Uh, I don't know if you yeah. heard that. You made the all storyline yeah. team, despite any of that stuff. Hey, frustrations of this team can get the best of us. We all know that, and we say things. Lord knows, I've said uh, things I didn't want to say before, and that's actually, you know, that's every day almost for me. Uh, but anyways, Bob, thanks for calling, and uh, and if you haven't given us your shirt size and the address, make sure to I do have, that. I have. Good, it's good, that, good. There is, there is something positive I would like to say. All right. Uh, kudos to the whole front office for the masterful way they handled and drafted in the draft. I think that we hit a total home run. I think that they, they by trading back, uh, it was a masterful uh, stroke on Jerry's part. I think that we fill positions of need with great players. I'm very, very optimistic about this season. And uh, I've watched the interviews with the coaches that they brought in, and I am totally impressed. I think that we're on the uh, on the right path. I think that a change in defensive coordinators was needed. I love Dan Quinn; he's a great guy and whatever. But I think that a lot of the problems that Monty Smith had last year was he was being asked to do something that he's not capable of doing. I think Mike Zimmer is going to do it completely different. I expect to see that young man have a breakout season, and I think the Cowboys are going to have another 12 win season. And there's a good possibility that we could wind up in the championship game okay. thank you for taking my call right. have a great week all right well thank you all right good to hear from you again it's been a while since you've called um uh you know good positive uh, vibes there coming uh from any haven't seen and we haven't heard a lot of that i'm not not all fans are, are feeling the same way about what the cowboys have done or you know, what they really didn't do and then, which assign anybody um but but yeah i mean I, I think that they've got young talent on this team that that you know just needs to needs to to play. Uh, that was a caller, our second caller. You know, Jeff from Morgan said we're going to get to find out about these guys, and and that's you know, and what is it the the fifth caller said? You know, Joe from from uh, Pennsylvania said he thinks Will, Will McClay is the strength of the, of the team. And so if that's the case, then let, let these guys that they've picked, whether it be this year, last year, a couple of years before, we still got some draft picks that we haven't seen yet. So that they're going to get the chance. They're going to get the chance to play. Um, this team needs to have cheap superstars. 
And, uh, you know, if Deron Bland is one of them, I mean, he, he looks like a superstar, you know, especially when he's taking the, the ball to the house um, five times in a season. So, you know, that's – but they need more of those. They need those fourth, fifth round, sixth round picks to develop into starters and and, 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 and be, you know, players like that. Osa Odigizu, a third round pick. I mean, this is his contract year. They need a big year from him as well. So, yeah, I, I think that they can be – just like they were. I think the window is kind of closing based off the contracts, but I don't think it's closed at all. I think they have a chance to have a good season this year, a really good season. They just got to have the things go their way. You you, you got to develop some players. You got to get lucky at times. You got to get lucky with injuries and not have too many bad injuries. You got to have develop some good depth. So when you have those injuries, you can still go and, and win games. Um, and you got to be a little more, more disciplined. And maybe like you said, Bob, maybe, you know, they can, they can be that way on defense with Mike Zimmer, coming in you know you might not have as many flash plays there but you might have less penalties and i think with this team i think you you would take that all right michael lexington uh north carolina michael hey hey bud uh i'm first time caller all right we got a lot of first time uh, yeah uh, uh i called a few years ago on uh, mickey's show but i argued with him too much so i didn't call back to him been there but <laughs> i guarantee you <laughs> He um, uh, he's kind of hard to deal with. Oh, we all are. What do you got, Mike? Uh, I got. I, this goes back to uh, uh, the first year Dak was there. I've been wanting to ask this question. When they got to the playoffs, I wish they would have played Romo instead of Dak. I, I really believe we could have done something. I mean, what do you think on that? Um. I felt I was I was asked this not too long ago and I and I, I said I mean this is a tough one for me because um, I love both those guys. Um, right. Yeah, but, but yeah, Romo's so much better at passing. Yeah, no, you're right. Romo, to me, and I think you agree, Romo would have been the better option for that game, especially as it played out. Uh, I think they wouldn't have been down twenty-one to three or six or whatever it was. I think Romo would have been a better option for them in that game. However. There was no point in the season when that could have – it didn't make sense. Dak had – he needed to play. He played well. He kept winning. He kept winning. Is Romo back? Not yet. Guess what? Dak wins again. He wins again. They go win in Pittsburgh. Oh, Romo's ready now. Oh, no. Rom, Dak's still winning. What, are you going to change the team now? You got these two young guns, Dak and Zeke. You can't change it. They, he, he never let yeah, man, him – I mean, you know, uh, the running game carried – uh, Dak that year. I mean, it, it, Tony was so much better if the running game wasn't working. He could still win it for you. Maybe, maybe, but Dak wasn't losing it for him either, and so and no, you know no. he, he wasn't. Now he did not play well in that in that game early, but then he came back and that they were in position that whether well, they had it tied. I mean, uh, I just it was Dak's team. I I I, I love Tony. But it was Dak's team. At, at that point in the season, he had done everything he'd had to, to do, and I don't think the Cowboys could have could have switched back. I think you'd lose the team and lose the locker room if you did that. you got to remember, too, who was in the locker room and who is a locker room right. guy. Who did the team gravitate to? Who does the team gravitate towards now? Dak. It, they don't gravitate to Tony. I'm sorry. I, again, I said it. I've said it three times. I love Tony, but that's not. he wasn't that type of leader in the locker room. He's a leader in his own way. But not right. like Dak, and I think it would have been it would have been tough to, to, to make that change. So it's unfortunate. I really, I really believe uh, if he was in there, we'd have won. I I don't uh, disagree. You know, I don't disagree. I just don't think it's possible to put him in. And, and you know, and I don't think Tony ever received the respect he deserved. He got criticized so much, and I know it's because he was a quarterback in Dallas. But I mean, he was a great quarterback. I thought. Yeah, I think Dak and Tony are very very similar. In their careers. All right, Mitchell or Michael. Sorry about that. Uh, thanks for the call. Let's go to uh, Chris in San Angelo. Hey, Nick. How are you doing? I'm sir? good, man. How are you? I'm doing well. I didn't even know you were on today. I know. I know. I, 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 I popped it and I saw you Boom. and I called and the phone rang. So that's two surprises in the last ten minutes. Yeah, and, and it's it's no coincidence that we had a lot of first time callers and a lot of callers that don't call all the time just because. <laughs> yeah, we we switched it up. Um, I'm not, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know if I love doing that again, but that's a fine. All right, Chris, yeah. what do you well, got? I think I might be maybe a five-time caller. I'm not sure. That's but anyway, right. No, um, where I am, uh, since I had to come up with something really quick, you were talking about Dak. 
with me and a lot of other people, we we get labeled DAC haters. And but the thing is, we're not. Um, do we think that DAC is worth fifty plus million a year? No, but I don't either. And but I have his jersey hanging up in my yeah. closet, you know. And so it's like I love him. I want him to succeed. But just because I don't think he's worth fifty plus a year, I don't think makes me a hater. You no. know what I mean? <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. And, and I don't even try to look at it that way anymore. What I would say is, do you think Dak needs to be in the top ten highest paid quarterbacks in the league? Right. If you think he does, if you think he's top ten and he should be paid that way, then don't worry about what the number is because the number got out of control in 1985 when they started making a million dollars a year or whatever. It, it's always been out of control for you right. and me. So what, what my point is is that you think he needs to be paid fairly, and if that's the case because of what he's going to do, not because of what he's done, but what he right. is going to do, if you think he is, is still going to be a top ten quarterback in the next – four to five years, then he does deserve that, that money, regardless of what it is. Right. Well, I mean, that's true. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just, you know, they keep talking about pieces of the pie and that's a, that's an awful large chunk whenever you have a salary. No cap, doubt. So. There's no <laughs> doubt. It's, it's, it's a tough way around it. I get it, but it's got to, got to build a team around it. <laughs> it's tough. It's tough to play, uh, you know, with that kind of money, it's tough to play with a quarterback who sucks. So I mean, it's, it's, exactly. you got to find a, a middle balance there. All right, right on, man. Okay, right, man. Chris. I didn't have much else. Hey, whenever you get a chance, check out the movie. Uh, I think it's kind of a guy movie, maybe not. Uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood. Oh, I've heard. Yeah, I've heard about that. I've actually, I tried to watch it on the plane a couple of times. I didn't last very long doing that, but I'll maybe I'll give it another shot. You, you uh, got? Yeah, you have right. to. You, on a plane might be a bad time. All right. Have a good have a good day, Nick. All right, Chris, appreciate it. Uh, all right, we got to roll out of here because we've got players' lounge coming up here uh, next. So we want to let them talk about the schedule as well for Chris Beam, Nick Eatman, all the first time callers, and everyone that called and hadn't heard from in a while. It's great to hear from everybody. We will be back on Tuesday to talk Cowboys storyline. See you then. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!